We, as Christians, always need to be prepared for the things we do not expect. And why is that? Because frequently there are things that happen in each of our lives we did not expect. I mean, think about how often you have ever said, I didn't see that coming, or that came out of the blue. And I think, too, the things that we find so disappointing in our lives most often are the things we didn't expect happening. We didn't expect occurring. And the things we find so discouraging, I think, are oftentimes the things we did not expect. And so we do need to always be prepared for those things we do not expect. And again, these are, these are things that are discouraging. These are things that are disappointing. These are things that are tr troubling, that bring you to a point of asking, how am I going to handle this? How am I going to react to this? Or how should I react to this? And so, uh, again, we always need to be prepared for the things we do not expect. So how? How should we all the time be prepared for the things we do not expect? You might be thinking of the answer already. And we're probably... Most of us, if not all of us, are all on the same page. How do I prepare for the things I do not expect? It's with God's word. I always need to be thinking through God's word. And as I think through it, I need to pray through it. Meaning, as I think through God's word, I need to talk to God about it. And then lastly... As I think through it, as I pray through it, I also need to be highlighting areas of my life or things in my life, situations in my life, where I know this applies. It's a reason to take really good notes on Sunday as you listen to your pastor preach. And as you walk through whatever passage you're walking through together, it's a really good idea. Take notes. And as that as you leave Sunday and go back home, and as you go throughout your week, review your notes and find the things in those notes and throughout that text from that Sunday that you need to continue to think through, pray through, and highlight areas of your own life where you know for sure this applies. And that's the same thinking I want us to continue to bring every week to what we're calling our fighter verse. So in addition to Sunday morning, I think it's good as a church family, we meet like this, where we take a look at a fighter verse for the week. And I'm highlighting that word fighter. And a, a fighter, when you think about it, a fighter is always prepared. Whether it's a boxer, whether it's a soldier, there's always training going on to be prepared. And to be prepared for what? Especially those things you do not expect. And that's how I want us to approach those two simple words coming together, fighter verse. And then we add this word to it, our fighter verse. This is our fighter verse to be prepared for those things we do not expect. Why? Because I want to apply God's word to my life and live it out as I live for him and serve others. And there's only one way to get prepared to do that. It's to think through God's word pray through God's word and highlight areas in my life or situations I know of where I know for sure this applies. And so for this week, our fighter verse will be Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Let's read it. Proverbs 4, verse 23. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. You know what I think is the most important word there? It's the word for. Because my eye right away is drawn to that very first phrase. Keep or guard, keep your heart with all vigilance. Doesn't vigilance sound like a, a fighter word? Like it takes work? Be on your guard with all vigilance. Be alert. I have no problem guarding my heart. And when I think about guarding my heart, I kind of think about guarding my heart from others. And what I mean by that is, there's a part of me that says, I'm going to build a wall 
around my heart, guarded, so that it does not get hurt. And think about it. What is usually the cause of the hurt to our hearts? Usually, it's people. People are the cause. And it's because people can be so disappointing, so discouraging. And so, since I don't want my heart to get hurt anymore, the best thing to do is just to build a wall over it. Meaning, I'm not going to let you get too close. I might just keep you at an arm's length. And if I can keep you there and not let you get any closer, you won't be able to reach my heart. I can like you. I can still be kind to you. But I'm not going to get close to anyone. Because in getting close to anyone, there is that great danger that my heart becomes vulnerable, it's exposed, and can be hurt. But that's not what Solomon is speaking to here. Although, that's what I thought about when I read that. And I thought, I can do that. I can limit how many people I'm going to get close to, who I'm going to get close to, who I'm going to let see the real me. But instead... Solomon says this, keep your heart with all vigilance, fight, guard it, guard your heart. Why? For from it flow the springs of life. So my heart is inward. I need to guard my heart for what reason? Because there's something that will flow out of it, go outward, springs of life. So if I guard my heart, I can affect others. See, I thought very selfishly, I'm going to guard my heart to affect me protect me. Instead, I need to guard my heart as I live for God and serve others. I need to guard my heart for so from this heart will flow springs of life. And who will that springs of life be for? It's going to be for all those people I come in contact with. So doesn't it seem counterproductive to say, I need to guard my heart so I don't get hurt, so therefore I'm not going to get close to anybody? Here it says, guard your heart so that you can affect other lives. So how might I be able to guard my heart? Well, the rest of Proverbs 4 tells you. How can I guard my heart so I can affect others? Verse 24, put away from you crooked speech and put devious talk far from you. That's pretty simple to think about. We, I think we all know what crooked speech is. I think we all know what devious talk is. A way to think about it is, will this um, speech or talk, or these words, will they be for the building up of life or for the tearing down? Are these words of life or words of death? That's a good principle to think about. This conversation I'm about ready to get into, will it be for the building up or for the tearing down? And if Jesus was right here physically, how would I feel right now if he was listening to this conversation? And here's the thing. He always is listening to our conversations. So watch what comes out of your mouth. Watch what you entertain in conversation. Verse 25. And think about it. It affects your heart. Verse 25. Let your eyes look directly forward. Could this apply? Quit as you're trying to go forward. Quit looking at the past. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. So if I'm going to keep my eyes looking forward and my gaze straight before me, what am I to keep my eyes on? How about the goal? Doesn't that sound like something in the New Testament? I keep my eyes on the prize that I might finish well. I think the Apostle Paul said that. So I need to know what the prize is. And something we've been saying at Calvary the last couple of weeks is, especially as we talk about trials, that these trials are to give way to what? Glory. Let's not all forget what we're all looking forward to. It's the glory. And the glory is this, is that I will, in my flesh, behold Jesus in his flesh. I will do that. So I need to keep my eye on that prize, and that is the prize. Verse 26, as I do that, I need to ponder the path of my feet. Kind of thinking, how am I living and the way I'm living, uh, which direction is it taking me? Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. How about this? Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Well, 
wrong, that means stay in the center. And the center is the narrow path, I think. And it's really hard to stay on that narrow path. What we find ourselves doing, going to the left or going to the right. I need to have that healthy balance. I think of both though, of love, both of love and holding fast to making sure uh, I don't compromise my beliefs, my convictions. It's that radical centers I heard it put one time. I need to be both loving and firm. I need to be both loving and unwilling to compromise my convictions. I need that radical center. Do not swerve to the right or to the left and don't turn your foot. Or please do turn your foot away from evil. Turn your foot away from evil. And it's, we mentioned it kind of Sunday too, there's an old uh, children's song. Be careful little feet where you go. Be careful little eyes what you see. Be careful little ears what you hear. All those things help apply of guarding our heart. And why? Because from, from it flow the springs of life. Meaning how I live my life. If I guard my heart, I'm living my life and my life will affect others. It's that old principle that one life, one life can affect so many others. And so here's what I ask as we close. Keep pondering Proverbs 4.23 all throughout this week. Think through it, pray through it, and highlight different areas, different situations in your life that you know this applies. Because we are, as no matter what comes our way, what trouble, what trial we are enduring, we are to live to God and to serve others. Enjoy your week. Enjoy fighting. And guard your heart with all vigilance.